These are a few of my Colt Pythons. You can tell this guy's unloaded. It is a four inch polished stainless steel one. All three of them are in 357 Magnum, which everybody knows is a pretty hot load. Not as hot as a 44 mag or the new 460, but that's okay. It's double and single action. Comes with adjustable sights. Red outline, red front sight, white outline for quick target acquisition. Let's see if we can't zoom in on that. Piece of history. Colt Python was introduced by Colt in 1955. It is renowned the world over as one of the most accurate, if not the most accurate, revolvers on the planet. Production revolvers for sure. Came in a just a whole different array of different barrel lengths. You can get them in two and a half, three inch, four inch, six inch, eight inch. Uh, they usually carried about six rounds. They've made them in several different calibers. I don't know why they would stamp Python on a 22 caliber revolver, but they have. Uh, it is. It was supposed to be pretty much the most accurate handgun in the world for the late 50s and early 60s. This particular one is a 1963 Colt Python. It is blued because of the chrome molly barrel. This is the original finish on it. It is in excellent condition. I bought this off of a guy uh, and it was quoted by an auction house at 95 to 98 percent. It had been fired all six cylinders but as you can tell you really can't tell about it. This was probably the most accurate revolver I've ever personally shot. Back then they were not doing a front red sight or white sight or that line rear sights. I can personally vouch that I could easily kill a deer with this at 100 yards. I've never seen a revolver this accurate. They're not kidding when they said that these are of the most accurate revolvers in the world. Comes with a vented rail. And again, it's six shot. It's double single action. These are the original wood grips with it. These I hear are selling for about $200, give or take. Which leads me to my only problem with this particular gun. To get parts for it is a pain if it was to break, and it's very expensive. For example, a new hammer for one is not uncommon to go for around $200. So, no, you don't want a to have to buy a new hammer, so don't drop it if you get one, if you choose to buy one of these. There's your Colt emblem. I personally, like I said, I love this gun. This one was my grandfather's. It's a 1972 era, 72-73. Again, there's no white outline on sight yet or a red front sight. Still though, same vented rail, and they have actually started at this point to fill in the barrel lug, but they didn't do that on the older ones, which is I think is kind of funny. But there's your piece of trivia. Again, there's the original wood grips, original hammer, original everything. But that's that guy. I love these things. They're practically like my children. Except, you know, my kiddos, they don't like that, or my kid. Though they like guns, don't get me wrong. But this one's polished stainless steel. This one's a late 70s, early 80s. You can see the red outline again. No, the red front side and the white outline. All of them are adjustable sights. Here's your vent ram. It's got a filled in barrel lug. All six shots. I bought this one. It was 99% condition. They had shot three cylinders in it. And the other three I didn't even touch. I guess whoever bought it just didn't want to shoot it too much. They probably sold it to the gun shop. I bought it from, for a pretty
pretty penny. I know I paid a pretty penny for it, and I still got it on a deal. It had a non-original wood grips, so I replaced those with these hoe grips because I intended to use it. And I do use it. It's it a thump a wild boar. Pretty hard. And it will do it at about 40 yards. Pretty easy. This is the one I use. When I use a 357, when I think the occasion may call for it over my 45. Or I just feel like carrying it for a change. But I love this gun. Quick thing about the serial numbers, you can I just this is another piece of trivia. You can tell a late 70s or not a late 70s, late 50s and early 60s model by whether or not there's a letter in front of the serial number. This one does not have a letter in front of the serial number. I forget to uh, I forgot to mention that, but it is a 1963. Like I said, this one's late 70s, and this one's early 70s. I had one from the early 90s. I sold it. It was a nice gun. I figure jobbed it, too, and everything. But, I don't know. I needed money one day, so I sold it. I'd love to have it back, don't get me wrong. And, like I said, the blue ones are in chrome molly. Stainless steel on the stainless steel ones. Chrome molly barrels is the key to how accurate they are. That and the fitting, the forcing cone, and that the fact that Colts have a different lockup than a Smith & Wesson. That's why Smith & Wesson can't defeat them in the accuracy. Remember, it takes about six hours. As another side note, it takes about six hours to make a Smith & Wesson 686 feel like a Colt Python in double action. That's polishing and tuning the components inside of 686 just to be at where the cult python starts now I'm not putting out Smith & Wesson I love Smith & Wesson I've owned numerous 686's in performance shop revolvers and I'll own many more of them I'm sure they are workhorses they are awesome but cult python is unparalleled always will be in my opinion I wish Colt still made them. For some reason, Colt has decided not to make them anymore. And their great ingenious behavior, they usually quit making what sells. Though, let's face it, they were not cheap. They made them out of the custom shop for a little while, which made them even more expensive. But I love these guns. I always love these guns. You can see the... I, uh, out of... My stainless one, I'll run the Hornady Evolutions and Spear Gold Dots. I figure shoot twice, one of them will get it done since one's a high penetrating round and one's a, a high power transfer round. And that's for game out on the ranch. That's for 400 pound wild mad boars. This is what I carry when I carry it in the city. It's just straight Spear Gold Dots. Well, and of course they're on speed loaders. Quick change out. Well, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe. I'm doing all these review videos so that when uh, we do our ballistic test, you'll have some background on these guns so that you're not just like, where did he get that gun? This is just some of my collection. I'm going to do some knife comparison videos. That's why I'm doing a lot of reviews on the knives so that you can see them before I put them into action. And thank you for your time. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.